I suppose I should uh, finish off, well, I'm, I'm not finished with asymmetric encryption anyways, but just uh, in terms of the uh, Diffie-Hellman algorithm example, um, that is not because it is uh, a particular exemplar other than being the one that gets credited with being the first, and as noted, that's not exactly true. Um, but uh, uh, it is uh, uh, it, it proves that it works. It, it you know shows you uh, with numbers uh, that this really does work. Now, the numbers are very small to make the example understandable. Um, when you are doing uh, you know real asymmetric encryption, of course, you're dealing with far larger numbers. And uh, well, actually, the first slide uh, that I put up last time uh, does indicate that. But uh, anyways, uh, we will uh, have a brief digression into quantum cryptography. And uh, I suppose the first point to make is not to get confused uh, between quantum cryptography, which is real but isn't cryptography, and the theorized, and, and you know, probably it will work, but uh, theorized quantum cryptanalysis, the use of quantum computers to uh, uh, to break codes, to do cryptanalysis, to obtain the key uh, 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 by a, well, a kind of a brute force attack that quantum computers are able to do it, whereas traditional computers, uh, it's going to take a long time. Uh, the, the thing is that so many articles um, and even books about uh, quantum computing and, and uh, that that whole field, you know, just quantum anything, um, confuse these two issues because they both involve cryptography to a certain extent, but from completely different directions. Now, quantum cryptography. As I say, it's not cryptography. It is, in fact, just key exchange. Or, uh, as, as with asymmetric encryption in general, um, exchange of public information that allows you to calculate a key in agreement with another party uh, where everybody can see what you are saying what you what information you do exchange but they don't know uh, some of the background information and uh, this is this is already in use this is um, apparently a lot of the banks in Switzerland uh, use it now um, for their systems uh, you require dedicated single mode, fiber optic cable connections. Um, and, I mean, if you've got dedicated single mode fiber optic cable, what do you need encryption for, in a sense? I mean, it's not, it's not impossible. I remember having this argument with people from the NSA before they would admit that there was something called the NSA. Um, uh, them saying that it was impossible to tap uh, fiber optic cable and me saying, no, it's difficult, but it can be done. Um, and, uh, well, single mode fiber optic cable is, is even more difficult and, uh, it's quite problematic in, in terms of tapping it. But again, you know, never say never. Uh, anyways, the, the thing is, um, it's a, it's a commercial system. Um, I, I think we'll go through the BB84 protocol because it's a very elegant uh, solution 
which runs into problems of implementation, as is always the case with cryptography. Um, but uh, the theorized quantum cryptanalysis, or the use of quantum computers to attack cryptography, um, this is this is well theorized because we don't have big enough quantum computers yet. I mean, we do have some quantum computers, uh, and people are experimenting with them. And I strongly suspect that uh, the development is going to be all of a sudden, uh, because it's been going on for many, many years. There has been all kinds of research involved in, in trying to build quantum computers, and I have been researching the security applications of quantum computing and the threats that it's going to pose to us uh, for well, close on 20 years now. My goodness, time flies when you're having fun. But the um, the quantum breaking of cryptography and, and you know, people are going, ah, you know, we're all going to die. There will be no cryptography anymore. No, we have already um, produced new candidates for algorithms that are not going to be subject to quantum attack, or at least it's going to be uh, more difficult to attack them with quantum computers. Um, and, I mean, in any case, the, the Shor algorithm that uh, uh, is, you know, an algorithm which, when we get quantum computers, will be able to uh, attack uh, asymmetric cryptography. Well, it's, it's not all asymmetric cryptography. It's only the RSA algorithm because it's, it specializes in factoring. Although... It does seem to give information on periodicity, which may prove a weakness for basically any uh, algorithm that uses modular arithmetic, which is very common. So, um, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of complications here, and this is math, and you're not going to be asked this on the exam. But, um, anyways, the... Uh, that is theorized, and we, and we don't have those computers to do it yet. And we do have, as I say, candidates for algorithms that aren't going to be subject to those attacks. So, uh, you know, do not, do not confuse those issues. Quantum cryptography is real and commercial, although it's not cryptography, Quantum cryptanalysis probably will uh, happen once we get actual large-scale quantum computers, but that's not tomorrow. So, uh, with the current interest in artificial intelligence, it's interesting. I, I wonder if that's going to downgrade the, the research and development in quantum computers, which is ironic because quantum computers, with their pattern matching capabilities and uh, uh, ability to measure similar as opposed to exact matches, uh, will probably open up new areas for development of artificial intelligence. But we're wandering a bit far afield from security. Oh, I will uh, try and put some links to articles in the comments field when I post this.